All right, everybody, welcome to the video for lesson number 12, the last lesson of the chapter. So for this lesson, we're going to kind of uh, combine a couple of things we've learned in the last few lessons and kind of just look at the uh, different things that we could do with exponent, uh, exponential functions. All right. So for this first one, we're, we're buying a car. This car is $19,700. That's the initial value. And it loses 15% of its value every year. So that's going to be an exponential decay function. Now, it wants us to write this function in terms of months, not years. So the first thing we want to do is write the function in terms of years and then modify what we have to to make it in terms of months. So if we make um, y years, I could say p of y is equal to $19,700 times 1 minus 0.15 all to the number of years. It's a yearly decay, so we just use our regular basic yearly function. If we combine terms in that parenthesis, we get that function. Now again, that function's in terms of years. Now to make that in terms of months, well, I want to change the exponent to 12 times the number of years. So months is equal to 12 times years. So if I make the exponent on the outside 12, I need to change the exponent on the inside. So to change to months, I'm going to make the exponent on the inside 1 12. To make it so that the exponent on the outside could just represent months. Right, because again, we're trying to make it so that we have a um, monthly decay rate instead of a yearly decay rate. So if I do that, I get P of M is equal to some number to number of months. So I got to use my calculator here. And we get 0.9865. So there's a function in terms of months. Now it wants us to figure out the monthly percent uh, decay rate for this car. So in the formula we just created, this number here represents 1 minus r. So I could say 1 minus r is equal to 0 0.9865. Do some algebra. And we see that R comes out to be 0 0.0135, which is about 1.35%. Number two. Number two talks about this annual study of birds. And this annual study of birds has uh, two, two numbers in it, 750 and um, 1.16. Now notice this is a yearly uh, increasing function, so it's going to increase in population by 16% per year. So in the context of the problem, the 750 is the initial amount of birds. So whenever this study uh, started, that would be the initial amount of birds. Now the 1.16 that's going to be the rate of increase, which is 16% per year. Now, just like we did in the opening exercise, we want to rewrite this function in terms of months. <clears throat> so the monthly growth rate is going to change. So if 1.16 represents the rate for the years, if I take 1.16 and raise it to the 1 12th power, whatever that comes out to be is going to wind up being <clears throat> our yearly growth rate, which is going to be, uh, I'm sorry, our monthly growth rate, which is 1.012. Meaning I can cross off these two choices. Then we have to figure out what's my exponent going to be. Now my exponent has to represent months. Well, T represents years, so that eliminates that choice because 12T represents months, making this the best answer.
this was a multiple choice question on a regents exam just to kind of see how it all worked out the next says what is the monthly growth rate so if this growth rate is one plus r right that's what our formula says do some quick algebra i can see the rate is 0 0.012 which is about 1.2 percent <clears throat> not too bad let's keep going so here's another one of those uh, half-life questions. So half-life question is telling us that this uh, this uranium-192, it's an isotope, like all that stuff doesn't matter. Uh, as soon as I see half-life, we know what to do, all right? So we're gonna take the um, initial value, which in this case was 100 grams, multiply it by a half, and we're gonna multiply it by a half every 73.85 days. So to do that, I make the exponent t for the number of days divided by however long it takes to make that half-life. <clears throat> then it says to take and make this an equivalent expression that represents the daily decay rate. Well, if t represents days, I just want to change this equation so that t is my exponent. So if I rewrite this so that t is the only exponent I have, All I'm doing is kind of moving that part of the exponent on the inside, similar to what we've done in other problems. <clears throat> so now I could say A of T is equal to 100 times 0. 0.9906 to the T power. And then it asks us, what is the daily percent of decay? So if I take this expression or that part of this equation, that represents 1 minus R. So 1 minus R is equal to 0. 0.9906. 906 solve for r and i get 0 0.094 let me check that on the calculator i don't think i'm doing my math right there 0 0.9906 minus 1 0.0094 sorry mental math is not strong so if we move the decimal place a couple times, we get 0.94%. All right, moving right along. So next question notes here talks about uh, this home style restaurant that increases its profits by 5.25%. So if we want to write this um, as a continued exponential model, right, we can say the revenue in terms of years is equal to whatever the initial value is, we don't know, so we'll just leave that as P, as 1.0525 to the number of years. Now, if I want to rewrite this in terms of months, I'm going to take whatever that yearly rate uh, value is and put it to the 1 12th power. So I'm going to take the 1.0525 and raise it to the 1 12th power, which is going to give me 1.00. Four two seven. So I could say the revenue per month can be the initial amount times 1.00427 all to the number of months. Then to figure out the monthly rate of increase, right, I know this expression again represents 1 plus r. So I could say 1 plus r is equal to 1.00427 subtract the 1, so the rate is 0 0.00427, which as a percent rate is 0.427%. Again, it's not really telling us what the round to here, so we're just kind of putting some stuff down. Okay, uh, On a test question or on the Regents exam, even it would specifically tell you to round to nearest tenth or hundredth of a percent or something like that. All right, let's keep going. Number four is an interesting question because it talks about decades. So we have to kind of work backwards. So we're doing things a little bit different than what we've done here um, throughout this lesson so far. So let's first start by looking and examining the function. So the 76 in the function represents the uh, amount of people that we initially start the uh, survey with. So 76 million people when the survey begins. 
something like that, whatever the survey is, or uh, the initial amount of population, 76 million people. Just keep in mind that that number 76 is in millions. It's not um, 76 people, right? In 1900, there were way more people than that in the United States. So we have to think about it in millions. The 1.138, right, represents the amount of growth per decade, All right? So this is the growth rate per decade. which is about 13.8% every 10 years. So if I write this function in terms of decades, it's here. But if I want to rewrite this in terms of years, I need to change it so that my growth rate is not every 10 years, but every year. So I have to divide the exponent by 10. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm rewriting this function or this model to be 76 times 1.138 to the d over 10. All right, the amount of decades divided by 10 will just be the number of years. All right, so if I have 20 decades, if I divide 20 by 10, I get 2. So now I'm in terms of years. But I don't want it to look like that. I want it so it's just y in that exponent. So I want to move that one-tenth on the exponent inside. So I'm going to rewrite this as p of y is equal to 76 times 1.138 to the one-tenth power all to the number of years. Now I'm getting my yearly rate. Well, if I do that, p of y it's going to be 76 times, well, if I type that in my calculator, I get 1.013 to the y. And then if I want to find the yearly growth rate, I know this is 1 plus r. Subtract the 1. I get 0.013 as my yearly growth rate or 1.3% per year. All right, keep going here. Let's talk a little bit about caterpillars. So uh, number five talks about caterpillars and it says every um, five weeks, the number of caterpillars doubles. So this is kind of like a half-life question. So just like in a half-life question, I'm gonna say the initial amount is 20 and then I multiply by two. So we're saying every, you know, 70 days, it, it gets cut in half, or every 10 years, it gets cut in half, whatever that number is. But we're using a half because it's halving in size. Well, I can do the same thing backwards and just make it doubling in size. I think in the previous lesson, there was one in the homework where we tripled in size or something like that. So the exponent, just like we do with our half-life questions, is w divided by however long it takes to double. It then wants us to determine the daily percent increase of the caterpillar population. So we have the change from um, weeks and then change that to days. So the first thing I want to do is get weeks isolated here. I want to get the weekly percent increase, not the every five week doubling increase percentage. So if I say C of W is equal to 20 times two to the one fifth power all to the W, I've now put this in terms of my weekly percent rate. So I could rewrite that again, kind of clean up that um, parenthesis a little bit. So we get 1.1487 to the number of weeks. So essentially I took something here that was um, not in terms of a weekly uh, increasing percentage and now I figured out that the weekly increasing percentage is about 14.87%. Well, I don't want weeks, I want days. So how many days are in a week is seven. So if I rewrite this as C of D, not W, that would be 20 times 1.1487 to the 1 seventh, the number of days. So I'm changing the exponent, so I have to change the exponent on the inside by using the same kind of ratio. So if I multiply that out and see what that is in my calculator, I got whatever that comes out to be. So that's going to be one point something. So let's see what it comes out to be. 1.1487 to the 1 7th power. 
So that's 1.0200, so just 02 to the number of days. So if I want to figure out the daily percent increase, I know this is 1 plus the rate or the daily rate. So the rate is going to be 0 0.02 or 2% each day. Not too bad. Okay, moving on to the homework. All right, so we have our homework now. So we got to talk about um, the same idea here moving forward. So number one talks about this bank depositing money, 2% interest. It gives us an um, interest rate, um, and that interest rate is in terms of years, right? And it wants us to um, accurately reflect the annual interest rate. So to figure out the annual interest rate, I want to make the exponent just t. So I'm going to take this part here and evaluate it and see what we get. So I just have an exponent of t. So if I rewrite this as p of whatever that is to the t, I get my answer. So all I'm doing now is I'm typing into my calculator parentheses 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 2 and parentheses and squaring it, and we get... 1.0201. If you're not getting that decimal in your calculator, try and put it in two different parts. Figure out what the parenthesis is and then just square that number. You might just be typing something into your calculator wrong. So we can see clearly that it's this third option. Number two says to express as a certain element that decays uh, after d hours, determine how much to use the expression. Uh, and write an equivalent expression P of H in the terms of um, hours. That is a typo. This is supposed to say days, D for days. That would make more sense, right? So we're converting something that's in terms of days and we want to convert it to hours. So to convert something to hours, I want to change my exponent here a little bit. So since there are 24 hours in one day, I want to take this um, decimal 0.5 and raise it to an exponent. Right, so I want to take days and change it to hours by saying, well, I'm going to make 0.5 to the 1 over 24 power because there are 24 hours in one day and raise the exponent not to days anymore, but now to hours. Essentially, like I'm converting both parts at the same time. So if I do that, I get P of H, which is still 100 times 0.9715 to the number of hours. Now, if I want to figure out the hourly percent of decay, I know that this number here represents 1 minus r. So if I do 1 minus r is equal to 0.9715, do some algebra, I get a rate of 0 0.0285, which is about 2.85%. Number three is a really good question. So number three is a question that uh, they actually asked on the Regents exam. And we modified it a little bit here, but it's the same idea, right? Um, so it says in New York State, the minimum wage has grown exponentially. In 1966, the minimum wage was $1.25 an hour. And in 2015, it was $8.75. Algebraically determine the rate of growth to the nearest percent. We don't know the rate. That's our problem. So I know the future amount, 8.75. I know the initial amount, 1.25. I don't know the rate, right? So I don't know this 1 plus R value. But I do know the exponent. It's the number of years between 1966 and 2015. So if I subtract those two years, I see that it's 49 years. Divide both sides by 1.25, and I get 7. So I have 7 equals 1 plus the rate all to the 49th power. Now, I want to get rid of the 49th power. And to do this, I could do two things. I could use radicals, and I would have to take the 49th root of both sides. Or I could use exponents, because that's easier, and just multiply both sides by an exponent of 1 over 49. That's going to cancel these 49s, 
and then I'm going to get a decimal for whatever that comes out to be, which is totally fine. So in your calculator, if you do 7 to the 1 over 49, you get 1.0405. Which is equal to one plus r. So that would be like the base if I was rewriting this as a model. We're not, so we want to actually figure out what the rate is. So I can figure out what this um, rate of growth per year is by subtracting one. So I get the rate of growth is 0 0.0405, and it says to nearest percent. So if I write that as a percent, it would be four percent. It'd really be 4.1 percent but nearest percent is like rounding to nearest whole number now the next part says determine the percent rate of change over a, a decay for the nearest percent again sorry typo that should say decade that would make more sense so to change that to a decade instead of going every year i want to go every 10 years now again this is a little bit tricky because uh it's different so let's look back for a second before we do this question um, to that decade question we did in, cl in the class lesson here. So here's the decade question. So this was in terms of decades. So I raised the exponent to 1 over 10. Well, what if I wanted to go backwards, right? So what if I had the yearly equation and I wanted it to be a decade equ equation? I wouldn't raise the exponent to 1 over 10. That would divide the number of years by 10. I want to multiply the number of years by 10. So in this case, I want to take this rate, this one point. 0405 number and I want to raise it to the 10th power. Notice I'm ignoring the rest of the equation. The initial amount is going to stay the same. The number of years between 1966 and 2015 is going to stay the same. The only thing I care about is changing the rate. Well if I do that I get 1.4875 which represents 1 plus the decade rate. If I change that to a percent, so I could do 48.75% or 49% per decade. Sounds like a lot, but there was a big change between those years, right? So every 10 years, it's going to have to go up a decent amount to get to where we are, we're at at $8.75 in 2015. Hopefully these videos helped you clean up the last couple lessons here in this lesson. Uh, moving forward, you got some practice of these uh, types of word problems. You have some time to work on your, um, your, your reviews and things like that for your upcoming tests next week. So just keep that all in mind. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions or anything like that. All right, and I'll see you all soon.